Welcome back to Calvary Life. This is Calvary's podcast to uh, the members of our church, but also anybody that's interested in the life of a, of a Baptist church. And so we are here today, and I am Charles Uptang, and with me is... Joyce Alexander. Joyce is our uh, Director of Preschool Ministries, and I thought today would be a good day for us just to uh, talk to a staff member about their role here at Calvary and also about uh, the wonderful world of preschoolers. And uh, so, Joyce, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I know, you know, most of our members have known you for years, but just uh, for those who might be new or not in the preschool world, tell us who you are. Well, I am married to my Mr. Wonderful. His name is uh, Bill, and uh, most people call him Mr. Bill, and he helps me. He's When you call me here, or when the church called me here, they call Bill as well. And between us, we have four children, and eight grandchildren, and one foster grandson right now. Wow. So a big family to take care of, and uh, of course, um, things. What tell us some stuff about preschool ministry. Well, um, First of all, let me back up if it's okay. I want to tell the church that I have been honored to serve here. We're beginning on our number 18 years. Yeah. Um, Charles Uptain and I met about 23 years ago when I started in vocational ministry. So 18 of my 23 years has been serving this church right here. And um, I- I'm thankful for that. So serving preschool is I don't know what the conception is in people's mind I do get to teach a little bit but the majority of what I do is organize love on people which means encouraging them it might be putting an arm around them might be praying for them there's uh, lots of different variables there yeah you know for Joyce for me I, I think one of the the things you probably do the most is really network with people around you. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's through the week, it's calling, it's texting, it's it's uh, lining up stuff for Sunday, obviously, and Wednesday. But more than that, I think you you really care for our people, and so you're more involved and uh, more about uh, connecting with them than any mm-hmm. anybody I see. So I appreciate about that about you. Well, I just love people. So uh, tell us uh, what role you think preschool ministry has at Calvary in the lives of our young families. Well, um. I think that young families, when they come to the preschool department, let's let's take a young family, for instance, that just had a baby. They're, number one, looking to make sure that their child is taken care of, their physical needs, and that they're secure in a building, and if they're older, that they're taught the Word. And we try to do all three of those things, help them stay safe, secure, and teach the Word. Yeah. So what a, give us some role. What do you think your role is towards those those parents? Is there anything that preschool is really working towards with those parents or, um, uh, you know, do you, do you see your job as kind of helping them become the parents that God's made them to be, I guess is what I'm leading you to say. Well, you know, my word for years was I partner with them, try to. Um, now, we've got a lot more preschool parents now than we used to, so I, I hope that I'm doing an okay job ministering to them. But I love to resource people mm-hmm. um, and and I try to make sure what I resource has been checked out by senior staff that make sure it's uh, on target. Um, I love to just come alongside of them and help them wh- however I can, you know. Yeah. Uh, one thing I know we started a few years back, well, more than a few now. Like you mentioned, we've been around here a while, me and you both. And so uh, uh, more than a few years ago, we started uh, having a class that went along with our parent-child commitment service. Mm-hmm. Um, talk a little bit about what you try to do in that class. Okay, when um, what what Charles is talking about is right before dedication, the actual dedication service on Sunday. Well, it's more about the commitment that a parent makes, right? And um, that service is very meaningful, but but it gives me an opportunity before the service itself to sit down with parents in a room, and a lot of times sitting around a table much like this they don't even know each other so they get to meet each other and then I talk to them about um you know what parenting is how heavy it is I have an illustration about that of a jar of pennies and and how heavy the responsibility is but I tell them that I'm here to help them and so is Zach and and so is Reagan that's that's another thing I wanted to say is that I still view um, what I do as the bottom of a house, like the foundation. In preschool, we build a foundation. We start teaching children about God and the Bible and church, and then we turn it over to Zach uh, in the children's department, and they build, and then Reagan builds. And hopefully by the time someone graduates high school, they own their faith. Yeah. Um, So that's 
uh, what we talk about in that meeting, too. We talk about a lot of things in there. We talk about serving and giving and a lot of the things that are echoed in our membership class. Yeah. So speaking of servant, serving, how many um, volunteers from our church membership does does it take to do your, your positions in preschool? Well, a lot of people don't realize that we have a mix of paid employees and volunteers because we have a large ministry and you can't put babies in a room with a kindergartner. Right. So you got to, you got to divide them up. So I need 10 volunteer spots per week. And you're talking about just during the worship, just during worship on Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh And then I have 25 regular life group volunteers. And then I have 10 regular every Wednesday night volunteers. So it takes a, a crew. I counted up just on my VIP list, which is volunteers in preschool for worship time, 150 volunteers. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of people that give an extra hour or two, um, and that comes around what about every eight weeks or so? Is that no, the normal? What's once the rotation? A quarter, four oh, times you've got a them year. up to once a quarter. So uh, that's even more of a benefit for more people to be involved in there and volunteers is, is is, and it does take that. So the more of us who help, then of course the the times that we're away from our normal time in worship is less because mm-hmm. we get in a rotation there. So um, talk to talk to me of something that um, we haven't mentioned, but um, talk to me about how you uh, go about training somebody that's coming for the first time into preschool like that. Well, um, you are never alone in a classroom with a child. That just doesn't happen on my watch. Um, and um, a, a little known fact now is that we do have cameras um, that help us with that. But I talk to them, I train them, but I do have a video. (laughs) It needs to be updated because I don't even have that hairstyle anymore. But um, I train them of what to do, how to come into the room. First of all, how to prepare before you come into the room, how to come into the room, how to uh, make sure the children stay safe. Like when a preschooler comes in, they go to our tree Mm -hmm. where the computers are, they get a name tag, and a parent gets a receipt. And the parent is supposed to present the receipt to the person at the door in order to get their child. So I train them about all of that. I tell them the things they can do and the things that they can't do and even help them with their lessons. Yeah. Uh, and that's the next thing I'll say. Do you, do you give them something to do or do you just say, okay, you got them for an hour, have fun? <laughs> uh, well, I will admit that during the worship time, Babies Through Twos is about physical care. But we have a covered playground. And we have books, and we do have a lesson that we ask them to reinforce from the life group lesson. Now, if you're in threes, fours, or kindergarten, you get to go to preschool worship, and it's a rotation. And they don't have to do anything. We've actually prepared that for them, except take care of the children. Mm -hmm. And they get to go hear a lesson. And I've heard a lot of the adults say, I've learned a lot from just being in here listening to the to the preschool worship lesson. Right. I, I know for my personal family, um, I had a, a, my older three all were also um, student helpers for you. Do you still use student helpers like that? I do. And I like to only use student helpers in threes, fours, and kindergartens, maybe two-year-olds, okay? But I think it's great um, preparation for service. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, like you said, your older three, every one of them served somewhere. And um, even one of them came out and worked for me. Yeah, so uh, I was actually thinking about it before our conversation that I got to get on Charlie. You know, he's <laughs> he can't he can't be the one that doesn't go over there and help in preschool. Some, that's so. right, that's right. But yes, we could not do what we do without a student volunteer. Now, I did say that I prefer them to be twos through kindergarten, but sometimes I have to recruit them to stroll a baby in a stroller. But I have that, my eyes on them the whole time. Yeah. So um, they have things that they do, and and we teach them how to speak to the children and how to calm them down. I think that's a good thing and how to encourage and play with them right and, you know, those kind of things. Right. So, so dealing with volunteers then as we finish that part, um, what, what would someone need to do if they wanted to help or who do they need to, who do they need to call Joyce? Uh, Joyce Alexander, <laughs> you could call or email Joyce at CalvaryDothan.com or call my phone number. It's published in the bulletin. Um, but first of all, I need to be a church member. Yeah. Um, that's, that's important, uh, because this is our community. This is our fellowship. And uh, we need those that uh, are a part of us to be helping us with that. Right. But that's also part of our um, covenant for the church and our process. So we submit to that. Um, you know, we talk in preschool all the time about obedience and submitting to authority. We do the same in preschool. And then they, in turn, submit 
to get a background check. In other words, they give me permission to run a background check for them. Right. And I run that background check, and then I interview them, and um, we talk about what they prefer. Some people prefer not to ever be with the baby. Right. Uh, you know, we just, and others just want to be with the baby. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> right. You know, I've had to change that up a little bit because uh, used to we had just paid – employees and the baby because they cry a lot if they don't see the same person but there's a lot of people that are nurturing people that want to work with babies so I've changed a little bit right well that's good so um, I wanted to bring up something else something kind of different uh, a ministry that has been going on here uh, for what was the anniversary that we just did for weekday what was the anniversary 50, 50 years? Yeah, I think it was. So <laughs> a ministry that's been at Calvary for 50 years mm-hmm. is our weekday ministry. long time ago, it was called the Child Development Center. Yes. And uh, we have upgraded our name to be the weekday ministry. Mm-hmm. And so during the week, uh, we have a full uh, full day care for preschoolers from, I guess, six weeks mm-hmm. up through, and then, the, of course, kindergarten, even, even through kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Some stay mm-hmm. all day. And then also with that, we now have a kindergarten and preschool which is a three-year-old, four-year-old, and kindergarten classes that happen on the mornings of the week. So basically 8 to 12. So Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how you are um, involved in that weekday ministry as the preschool director. Okay, well, in addition to ministering to 138 children here during the week on Sundays and Wednesdays, um, Michelle Beasling and Jackie Colson make up the team for the weekday and the preschool and kindergarten ministry. And we make a team. There's three of us. And they are directors, and they have responsibilities, and they even have, um, for lack of a better word, power when I'm not here. But we work as a team. There's very seldom anything that happens that I don't know about. And I love to be uh, the person that they call and say, will you come over and pray with somebody? Mm -hmm. Or will you come over and talk with a family? Or will you contact this family and invite them to church? Um, And we sit down together and plan intentional things. Like last year we had, um, I think it was called a spring fling, and we had all the families come out in our um, parking lot. And and, um, we ask our staff to come out sometimes and help with that because that's good relationship building. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're planning another one of those and I will get this mixed up, but it's called fall family fun fellowship or something (laughs) like that. And uh, so we're, we plan those things so that we can build community and that when people have a need, they will call on us. uh, That's happened over and over again. There'll be something that happens in someone's family and they need you, you know, that's, and they're not going to call on you if they don't know you. Right. So we got to get to know them. Yeah, I know when you when you started here, when you came to work here as the preschool director, it was very important. The church saw the importance of having weekday being covered supervision wise by a staff person, mm-hmm. and we still have that because um, you know I've seen other places that don't necessarily go in that route. And even here, way back when, <laughs> there just there's some tension that builds up between a staff that's here all day, every day, mm-hmm. and then a, and then you have the volunteers who come in on Sunday. And I think you've done a good job of of balancing that tension and helping both sides feel important because they are they're just mm-hmm. different. <laughs> they and are. we want to we want to see that um, that preschoolers are handled in different ways than that. But but in both situations, it's done for. Um, for means towards the gospel. Like you said, mm-hmm. it's a foundation even in weekday. Mm-hmm. And uh, so your leadership there is important so that we have some continuity mm-hmm. of our preschool and also continuity of supplies, continuity of building space, <laughs> all those things that I think one person helps. Uh, and, of course, then they they can do the ministry that they need to do, whichever it is, week, weekday or on Sunday mm-hmm. like that. Well, um, let's clarify for the folks. There's not too much teaching anymore. But, you know, cause one of my things uh, when I first came here was, why are we locking our supplies yeah. up? <laughs> we teach our preschoolers to share. Why can we not share? Um, you know, uh, but then on the other side, I ask them not to put, holes in the wall because that's not being a good steward so that is my job to balance all of that right um but also uh the other tension that might come into a lot of centers is the shared space because they are in that that space five days a week and we pretty much come in two to three times a week right Uh, but nobody has ownership that way i explain it to them is it is owned by calvary baptist church yeah 
Um, but they love you, and they they want you to be able to be successful. And we have a good relationship. And I don't know. We're having a meeting soon. I hope we're doing really good financially because that's the um, part that I always stress about, you know. But um, the people part's mine. Yeah. The money part's yours. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and we are. We we're they are holding their own. Uh, it's good to see weekday. Uh, not being a burden on the church when it comes financially. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, it is a ministry of the church, so they get the benefits of all other ministries do. We don't make them pay the power bill and those kind right. of things. So it's a ministry of the church, but they do not, they're do not they not a, a burden on Calvary, uh, on our on our budget. And so that's a good place to be in of trying to take care of people, take care of our employees. You know, it's I know you know this, it's harder and harder to get good employees. Everybody mm-hmm. faces that in, in child care uh, institutions are definitely in that category. And so we've been trying to give raises and things so that we can keep good employees. And, mm-hmm. and that's always a tension because then, of course, the only way to do that is to raise rates. And yes. then you're hurting families. And so the balance there is is always fun. But mm-hmm. um, but we're, we're trying to do our best with that. So, Well, um, can I brag on our preschool department for just a minute sure. that, that meets during the week? Um, Jackie Colson, I believe, has got a, a very good um, – team right now she always does but um i'm hearing this part of the year you know we're in, we're in october so school just started right and i'm always interested to know how children are doing when they leave here um we do teach them what they need we actually they're more than ready to go to school they can blend words and in, in kindergarten they can read yeah. um and and then we get the added bonus, the blessing of teaching them about God and the church and the Bible every single day. And I keep hearing um, people in their conversations talking about, oh, they're so ready for school. And that, you know, like one person I heard said they had a test and a reading test, and they're reading it like 76 words per minute, and the goal's only 30. Well, Calvary did that, or yeah. our teachers at Calvary did that. Right. But then, you know, we've got babies through twos that have to work up to that point. So Michelle is, and Nikki have done a great job with our team over there as well. So. Yeah, we're very thankful for the folks who, who lead those ministries and the teachers that, that do the hard job of being there mm-hmm. every day with, you know, and, and I don't know, I, I really, I think, and I'm not a behavioral science major or anything, <laughs> but it seems to me that uh, there are more um, child issues than there used to be. And so there's more things that they have to worry about and behavioral issues and and uh, it just seems to be more and more all the time and so they do a good job of covering those and 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 you help them handle the stress well over there well uh, what you're referring to is trauma um breaks my heart breaks my heart what these children have to go through and then they're in the foster care system and our church has embraced uh ministering to foster care yeah and um to adoption and, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, it's not the way it was several years ago, not only in this church, but anywhere. So I'm so thankful for that. But Trump, yes, our people are trauma trained. Yeah. And so they do a really good job of that. And by the way, all of our directors are members of this church. Yeah. And so um, that helps a lot. Yeah, it does. I, I agree. I think that's one of the benefits that we have at Calvary is the continuity that we can have from membership all the way to being the people who, who we hire. And, and mm-hmm. so... Um, it's it's good to have that on, on or across the board, really, mm-hmm. at all, all parts of our church. So yeah. very thankful for that. But I'm not sure that I ever min- uh, actually answered your question. We have 56 daycare children, and that includes a Mother's Morning Out program. Okay. And then we have, this is strange, but we have 56 preschool huh. families. And then um, we have, I forget, let's say Michelle said that 27 of them stay for extended day. Okay. So... 56 and 56 and then 27 more. 27 of those 56 <laughs> days. You know, right. math is not my thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's a good number of kids, no doubt. And yes. so very thankful for them and what we have. And, yeah, reaching and, out um, to the community like that. So. Yeah, and having full and having some uh, waiting lists at times is is good. Mm-hmm. So uh, very thankful for the staff mm-hmm. over there. Let me change gears on you, Joyce, before <laughs> we before we stop. And uh, you are, uh, you know this, you've been, been this for, uh, I guess, for almost 10 years now, uh, really the only staff member on, um, as in ministry staff, let me clarify, that is a woman. Uh, you hang around with a bunch of guys in the ministry uh, staff every day. Um, what do you, tell us about that. How is, how does that work for you with being the only woman here on the ministry staff? Well, you know, um, God created us male and female and he created us different, but he can, I believe he created us to complement one another. Yeah. Uh, I have never felt inferior on the staff. Um, my opinion matters. Doesn't mean that we always agree, 
but it matters, and you give me opportunity to say that. Um, I hope that I give a perspective for uh, women, other women in our church and families when it comes to planning. Like when we plan events and we talk about uh, what time we should do things, you know, right. for instance, it's hard on preschool um, children or maybe we're not doing enough in this area or we're doing too much in this area. So we, we, we work together well as a team. And I will say this, I think this is the best team we've had. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And I, I think Pastor Paul would agree with you on that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, another thing that I would say about my role as a woman on, on church staff, I alluded to it earlier about uh, submitting to authority, but our pastor, the senior pastor, has the vision for this church. And I believe that our job is to support him in that. And um, he leads us well. And um, I just try to love y'all well and help you any way that I can. And I love the project. You know that. But... Sometimes I get too many projects, but I love a project. It, I just throw myself into it and try to help you however I can. Yeah. Well, um, and, and one of those projects that you've been doing lately um, in different ways is, is being the staff liaison to our women's ministry. And, uh, you know, we have, we've, we've had an interview before with Jamie Perry, who's a director or leader of that, I guess is the right word. And, and um, she's talked about women's ministry. And so I thought I'd ask you the same question that we posed to her, which was, you know, how can women... Um, at Calvary serve the church? What, what do you see women as, as the role they can really serve with? Well, you and I had this conversation not long ago. Um, number one is discipling, I think, um, for me. Um, and, and my heart leans more and more to the Titus II model, an uh, older woman discipling younger women. Yeah. And D groups are still important, and I'm in a D group myself. So that's one way. Uh, serving on mission field, praying. Mm-hmm. You can teach in preschool children, students, and even in an adult women's class. Yeah. Uh, you can pray in the service, read scripture in the service. Um, there's many ways that women can support here. It's not just about baking cookies and, um, you know, or cooking a meal or, or um, cleaning the bathroom. There's many things that we can do. But here's what Jamie said in that podcast and what we were talking about um, at Coffee and Connect recently in this book. It's called Women and Work, I believe is the name of it, by, um, yeah, Women and Work by Courtney Moore. Whatever you do, whatever your hand finds to do, do it all for the glory of the Lord. That's in the Bible. Yeah. And, and you can bring honor to God when you are uh, washing dishes, when you are uh, taking care of your family, or whether you're doing um, women's ministry at Calvary. Yeah, that's true, and we we do appreciate you, and and you do put up with some, you know, with the guys, so to speak, at times. But we try to try to give you leeway to, um, you know, sometimes uh, not go to lunch with us if you don't need to, and sometimes you you do, and we appreciate that, and and are always uh, a very uh, helpful part of our staff. So we appreciate you in that. And um, so, anything else you'd like to add to the Calvary members out there about preschool ministry or about yourself? Anything else before we? Well, I just want to reiterate that I'm I'm so thankful for the support that I've gotten here. I think even from um, new members, it doesn't take you very long, and you know that um, I might have this vivacious, effervescent, or whatever over the top personality. I know one of our staff members said it that I was too sweet to be true. You remember him <laughs> saying that, and I said but I am. He said, I know that's what I was trying to tell you. You are, you are those things. And I, I I do genuinely love these families and I do carry burdens for them at times. You know that. Um, and, um, but if we need any, uh, anything, it would be more volunteers. And I know that it feels like I recruit all the time, but when you're in ministry, like I am, that's what you do. Um, but, we were reading a book recently, and our staff, Pastor Paul, challenges us with uh, uh, reading material, uh, not for big words and big things, but just it, it just makes you think sometimes. And we were talking about jobs and callings, and um, do you remember back when we all were taking all these personality tests right. and finding what your spiritual gift is? Yeah. And Paul and I were talking about that, and he said, well, we need to flip the script on that. He said, it's important to know what your gifts and talents are, uh, but I'm going to quote what he said. He said, but the calling is to serve where the needs are. So if the needs are in the kitchen or on the hospitality committee, as we call it, or um, or wh- wherever it is, preschool children are students or in the adult area we need to answer that call yeah we are a family and 
and a body, and God has put us together to meet the needs of this body, and, and He has given us the right pieces. And uh, so we just need to all be um, looking for those opportunities to serve. Mm-hmm. And preschool is definitely one, and I just wanted to kind of highlight it today and, um, and thank you for giving your time to us. And one other thing I'd like to mention is, uh, since Pastor Paul's not here, I can say this, is uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if you uh, want to tell Pastor Paul, um, especially how much he means to you, we would appreciate you doing that. And, mm-hmm. and as a church family, just lifting him up. I know you do that already with prayer, but, um, you know, just a, a card or whatever, he would really appreciate that. And I think uh, all the pastors would. I can speak as one of those as well, but I'm just wanting to mention that uh, for Pastor Paul, especially since he's not here and will not uh, would not feel comfortable doing it himself. So, no, he would um, not. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but appreciate him this month, especially in October, and we we really love the the job that we have and being here at Calvary together. Mm-hmm. And um, Joyce, we appreciate you being a part of that. So, uh, this will wrap up another edition of Calvary Life Podcast. And remember, if you have question f- questions for us. Uh, for a future uh, episode, uh, email us at podcast at calvarydothan.com, uh, and we'd love to hear from you and answer some of your questions on the air. So uh, thanks for being a part of this, and remember we are for God, for Dothan, and for the world. Mm-hmm.